Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Call of Duty Black Ops 4 video. In today's video we've got some actually uh, SE-130 action here and I'm going to be covering just the uh, latest update in the beta, the Day 2 update. Um, they're updating the game really really quickly so it looks like Treyarch is taking a lot of consideration from the community and taking our feedback and sort of doing updates towards that and kind of just balancing everything out hopefully. But anyway guys, I uh, hope you guys are doing well and hopefully if you guys do enjoy you'll leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're brand new. I actually have a few disclaimers here I want to go through before I uh, talk about all the stuff in the video. I actually ripped this straight from my stream. I edited out the talking from me just talking to chat and stream. So the audio is a little bit weird and the video quality is not quite as good. My uh, actual recording of this got corrupted so uh, future videos will have better audio and stuff like that. And also I live in Japan so this is the anime version of Call of Duty Black Ops 4. So hopefully you guys do enjoy the Japanese announcements and stuff like that. But basically, let's get into it. There there was a brand new update for the beta today. They increased the, uh, the level cap to 34 in the beta. They added search and destroy, double weapon XP to let us level stuff up. Um, and they've done some weapons tuning, which is the main thing here. So let's get straight into it, guys. The uh, the Augur DMR, which is basically a single shot uh, DMR rifle. And they said it was performing pretty well, but it needed a little bit of help filling out its mid to long range precision roll. So they improved its ADS sway stability for tighter long range engagements. I used it yesterday and it seemed pretty good but obviously it's it's got a lot better now so it might be actually worth using the auger once again. Now this one kind of makes me sad because I want them to be buffing stuff more than nerfing but the uh, the ABR223 provided too large of a power spike across the board so we're tuning it down. Um, slightly reduced damage so that it requires three headshots to kill instead of two. I've actually noticed that today like headshots are definitely nowhere near as strong. Um, slightly reduced hipfire accuracy, so it's not as overly effective in close quarters. So the gameplay that you guys are seeing right now is, you know, post update. So, um, you know, this is pretty much how the uh, the DMR is now. It's still really, really strong. The um, the ABR is still a very strong rifle, but they definitely have nerfed a little bit. They reduced the ammo count to encourage more tactical use and placement of shots. I definitely noticed running out of ammo a lot more today, and increased ammo gains from extended mags to compensate for overall reduced ammo count. So um, yeah, like I said, you know, you guys have probably complained a lot, and I know that's one of my complaints. If you guys checked out the last video, that the uh, time to kill is pretty uh, pretty high in Black Ops 4. So I don't really like to see stuff getting nerfed, but we will get to sort of move on a little bit here and go into what they've buffed. Basically, the Titan needs some love to reach its full potential as a high capacity suppressive weapon. They've improved the ADS recoil so that long range gunfire is more effective, staying on target, and additionally improved hip fire accuracy for better chance to defend in close quarters. The uh, MOG-12 shotgun has been given a boost, so they've improved the damage for enhanced cleanup ability. So I feel like the shotguns in this game are more for like finishing people off instead of um, proactively using them, which, you know, it's kind of sad. I thought it was amazing that you can get uh, secondary shotguns like Modern Warfare 2 in this game. Unfortunately, they're just not all that useful. The uh, GKS is um, intended to be a longer range accurate submachine gun. They've improved the recoil to make it a blossom into that role. We're keeping a close eye on this one and may adjust it again in the future. They improved ADS recoil for more precision on medium to long range targets. So the GKS should be a little bit better at range. The uh, Cordite slash Spitfire, they identified trends that the SMGs were a little bit too strong at range. So they reduced the damage dealt on targets at the weapon's farthest distance range. I'm, I've still been getting lasered bad today so I, I don't feel like it's I've really noticed much of a difference with the uh, the Cordite. Spitfire weapon, but um, th that has been slightly nerfed. And unfortunately, the MX9, uh, we wanted to make sure that players have had a solid SMG to play with. It may have been a bit too solid, so they've adjusted accordingly. They've nerfed the close range damage, so the time to kill is more similar to all our SMGs, and also reduced far range damage to bring it in line with the all our SMGs as well. So honestly, you, you kind of hate to say that. I see a lot of nerfs for the like the best guns in the game. Instead of them nerfing those guns, like the EBR and the Spitfire and all that kind of stuff. I would have honestly preferred to see them put other guns closer to them instead of bringing them back to the other guns. So it feels like Treyarch really does want to keep this, you know, higher time to kill thing going, which I'm not too necessarily happy about, but we will obviously see how that plays out. They've done some equipment tuning. So they've done some equipment tuning. They've nerfed the barricade, which is a good thing. So it's got a tighter cone of damage to focus on its uh, directional area denial. So the uh, the range on the uh, like guardian that's on the front of the shield. Which honestly I think should be just completely removed in the first place. Um, it's a little bit less powerful. It's a little bit more focused and only sort of focuses on one spot. So hopefully that's not as bad. Uh, with the ballistic shield, 
They've increased the shield movement speed to provide players more defensive capability when using this equipment, which, you know, you hate to say that, it's really not a good change, honestly. With the nine bang, they've increased the stun radius to affect a larger overall area of detonation. I was affected by this earlier where, honestly, like me and three of my other teammates were completely disabled for like five seconds or longer. I think it's like five to ten seconds. It's actually ridiculous how long that thing stuns you for. So, um, I'm, you know, not too keen to say that, honestly. So, once again, it looks like instead of nerfing specialists, they're pushing specialists up towards the other ones. So, I feel like, honestly, in, in all honesty, I think they're doing it the wrong way around. I feel like they should be buffing weapons to match them with the specialists and bring the specialists down a little bit. And, um, you know, obviously, increasing bullet damage um, and bringing specialists down so that they're not as prevalent in the game. So, I'm honestly not too keen on that, but we will obviously see how that plays out. And the, uh, the combat axe reduce the cooldown time so that players can earn this faster. So that basically the Tomahawk, you can earn the Tomahawk a little bit faster. They've done some stability fixes so that there's less disconnects and stuff like that, and hitching and frame rate drops and all that kind of stuff, and just a few improvements on the maps to generally improve frame rate. I've got a PS4 Pro so I don't really experience it too badly, but I know that a lot of you guys on just standard PS4 definitely do receive uh, some frame drops and stuff like that. So hopefully that will be a work in progress and hopefully that will be better before the release. Uh, like I said, they added Search and Destroy. I think they're adding Kill Confirmed as well today, so hopefully tomorrow we'll have some Kill Confirmed gameplay before the beta does close. And they're also looking at the lobby load times to make it a little bit easier to get into a match and so that it doesn't feel as tedious waiting in the lobbies. So that's pretty much the uh, the main updates. Uh, like I said, I'll just give you guys my opinion on it. I feel like the weapons you know, should have been buffed so that they feel as strong as the um, ABR and feel as strong as the MX-9 instead of, you know, nerfing those guns and then like slightly buffing a few of the guns. I feel like all of the guns should have been brought up. Um, I definitely would like to see some fixes with the armor, the actual Kevlar vest that you get in the game. I think it's very, very strong and I think it's definitely OP and quite an annoying feature. Um, it's honestly, it's one of those things which I think dominates that class. You know, there's not a lot of people using the stim pack and I feel like whenever you see the data that there's a lot of people using armor it usually indicates that there's some kind of an OP element with it. So I do think armor might get nerfed uh, eventually, and hopefully that is sooner than later. I would like to see the armor piercing rounds be able to be used with the stock and, uh, you know, stuff like that so that it's not as powerful in the game. Uh, once again, I would have loved to have seen some nerfs with some of the specialist abilities. Um, like, for example, like the, the charge times for things like Vision Pulse. Um, some of the things like the Shock Drone is, you know, extremely powerful in my opinion. Um, it just, you know, completely disables you. Um, those types of kind of perks, like I don't mind the one with the cluster grenades because, you know, you can counter it with flag jacket and stuff like that. But whenever it comes to like shock drones and stuff, they, they do be very, very annoying. So um, hopefully they do some more work with the specialists to make them a little bit more balanced, uh, balance out the health. You guys have probably seen me. I think in this gameplay right here, I'm running Crash, which um, allows you to boost your entire team's HP by 50. So it's like a 25% health boost for your entire team. Um, I've been using that a lot because purely I'm just kind of working with the health system. I feel like it's, you know, it's kind of broken. So um, in order to compete, honestly, I'm just using armor and crash a lot. Um, so I think, you know, stuff like that does definitely need nerfed. But let me know in the comments, guys, down below. What do you guys think about that? Uh, how, do you, how do you find those updates? And, you know, what would you guys personally like to see changed in Call of Duty Black Ops 4? before the full release in October? Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy the gameplay. We got the SE-130 that match. Um, I, like I said, I edited out my voice and stuff like that because, you know, I was trying to balance the audio. Basically, the way it worked is I downloaded the stream, the audio was too low, so I had to, like, balance all of the audio. It, it was very, very weird. So this this video is definitely a strange one. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this gameplay. The SE-130 is absolutely nuts. I can't wait to try it out on a map that's a little bit more open. Um, as you guys can see in this map right here, there's a lot of bridges and a lot of indoor areas. So it generally wasn't the greatest map for an SE-130, but... I did manage to pick up some kills with it, so let me know if you guys enjoyed the uh, the SE-130 gameplay. But that's pretty much it for me, guys. I hope you did enjoy the video. Like I said, if you guys happen to be new around here, feel free to hit that subscribe button if you guys want to see more. Uh, I'm going to be covering everything in Call of Duty this year, Blackout, Zombies, and Multiplayer. Uh, so feel free to subscribe if you guys would be interested in that, and I'll, I'll keep you guys up to date with all uh, news that's going on with Call of Duty uh, Black Ops 4. Or if you guys even are interested in the H1, that's normally what I cover in this channel. Um, if you like it, leave a like. If you dislike it, leave a dislike. And like I said before, leave me uh, your comments down below letting me know what you guys do think about it all. But that's it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. This has been King Plays. Good luck and peace out.
Mustards. Seen that guy in C, by the way. Just trying to get myself organized a bit better. B Oh, almost, dude.